Step 9, switch the actual process object to PID controller. In this step, we will switch the process object from the transfer function simulated process object to our actual process object. In my system, that is one temperature system, I can control the speed of the fan and get the feedback, the temperature feedback from this small process. The PID output can control the speed of the fan. And also, I'm using the transmitter with the PT100 with the temperature transfer to 0 to 10 volt, get the feedback to the PLC, and as a feedback process value to the PID controller. This PID output, that is this channel, will connect to the analog output. And this PID input will connect the actual analog input. So in my case, this analog channel, that is a 0 to 10 volts analog channel, is reading the transmitter output. That transmitter is connecting one PT100, measuring the temperature. And then I'm using this uh, FC105 function, transfer the analog input, scaling this input to the temperature value. So the temperature is around 43 centigrade. Regarding the analog output channel, from PID output, that value is uh, 0 to 100. So I'm using this AO scale, FC106, to scale 0 to 100 to the output analog channel signal. That analog output channel is a 0 to 10 watts. It's connecting one circuit board. That circuit board is a motor drive circuit board. It can regulate the speed of the fan. Shift to the PID controller. Those parameters are inside the PID controller. And regarding the PID parameters, currently that PID parameter, the gain that is a certain uh, integral action time that is 28 and the derivative action time that is a seven. Those parameters are calculated and uh, tuned by step seven and step eight. When we use the simulated process object as our controlled process object, we will use those PID parameters directly control our actual process object and let's see what the actual performance. All right, from the PID controller, let's hit this small button. And uh, we can see the train now. So currently this actual process is working in is a operating point. So the temperature from this PID set point that is a 43. So we can see the side point and the actual feedback that is work around the 43. And currently the output from the PID that is uh, around the 28. So this 28% value will give the analog output control the speed of the fan. So let's change this uh, side point from 43 to 45. Give a new side point setting. With the current PID parameters, let's see what the performance of the PID controller. We need to check the overshoot, rising time, and the settling time of this process response. And meantime, we can see because this is a one cooling system to increase the temperature. So that's why the output decreased to increase the temperature. I'm speeding up this video because this uh, transition process is really slow. From this uh, response curve, we can see there's no overshoot. That means this performance is really good. It also means those PID parameters, which tuned by using the simulated process object, also fits for this actual process. This also stays, so this methods are workable and available. That means, firstly, we can use the actual process data, record those data. This data will be used to model the process. And then we use the model of the process uh, program as a simulated process object. And then use this uh, simulated process object to tune the PID parameters. And after the tune, we shift back to our actual process, use those uh, PID parameters tuned it by the simulated process object and uh, test our actual performance. And through this picture and through this curve, that means this performance shows really good. That means those parameters are workable for this actual process. Maybe we will tune a little bit. 
but that's much better than we starting from the scratch. And now let's decrease this assign point from the 45 to 42. As we can see, uh, to decrease the temperature, uh, the control signal to the cooling system become much higher than before. So it's controlled by the PID controller. It's increased dramatically, basically from 28 to 60. And then we can see the temperature dropping down. I'm speeding up the video so you can see this process faster than before. And during this uh, dropping period, as we can see, the PID control signal, output signal, is already get uh, almost 196 or almost 100. This is uh, the fast speed this uh, process can drop the temperature. So currently, this process almost reached that steady state. As we can see, there will be a gap between the set point and uh, the actual process value. Even if it's a little bit small. So to eliminate this uh, offset, we can adjust uh, the gain and uh, integral these two values. For example, the gain could uh, set a little bit higher than before. And uh, this TI could uh, set a, a smaller than before to increase the integral in facts. So in next video, I will show how can we tune the PID parameters, use this uh, actual process object. And we already get uh, one basic PID parameters. We can based on these parameters, uh, based on the actual performance of our process value, and uh, fine tune the PID parameters. So again, so those parameters come from when we used the simulated process object. It's much better than starting from the scratch. So we, as we can see, those parameters are already almost good enough. Uh, but sometimes, based on the actual performance, we can still fine tune, uh, adjust a little bit on those parameters. So see you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.